everyone. Welcome to a very exciting edition of the Liquid Weekly Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Carl, and with me all is Taylor. And today, our special guest, Toby Luca. It's so good to be here. I was looking forward to this. Yeah, we were looking forward to it, too. So, <laughs> For a while. Toby, people are, are going to wonder. Um, well, first of all, let me answer the question. I'm sure it's on everyone's mind. I appreciate you wanting to be on a co-host on Liquid Weekly Podcast, but we're just not sure you've got enough experience at Shopify. <laughs> yeah, so, so... <laughs> you know, thanks for coming out, though. Like job uh, interviews are getting tough, you know. Like, um, <laughs> uh, like I hope you're not going to ask me like very detailed liquid questions. Actually, I yeah. really hope you do. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we will. <laughs> that, that one, but hey, it's like about um, you know interviewing and like all you know just like all the like magic you wield and weave here is uh, that's not my area. I I, I make nerdy uh, tools <laughs> for, for 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 entrepreneurs. <laughs> sure. But but we do want to know because people are going to ask us like Carl Taylor seriously how did you guys get Toby on your podcast so I mean how did we get you on our podcast what happened to, to well, I mean, today? like calling it um, uh, uh, Liquid Weekly was a good way of baiting me <laughs> <Very crazy>. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, no look I I mean I I you know like I'm sure we're talking about all sorts of things but like um, here's the greatest thing about um, uh, my job and 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 um, um, getting into the work I, I, I do in, in the Shopify ecosystem is like Shopify is one of the like super rare companies in this one regard in that like all our customers and all our partners are like deeply inspiring individuals, right? Like, it's just like, it's so cool to be building for builders. Um, it's like, like I'm an entrepreneur. I start a company, everyone, almost of a million people who use Shopify is an entrepreneur and start a company. And it's like, um, and so it's the same thing is true in a partner ecosystem. Everyone's like, you know, sort of had this spark of seeing like, Hey, there's a thing, um, there's a hole in the world that's like, you know, the shape of, uh, like liquid weekly, um, um, or the shape of an app that would be deeply appreciated or the shape of a theme that like is just like uh, perfect for, um, um, you know, will find its 1,000 true fans on the internet and uh, people will be very excited about it. You know, all these are like acts of building, which are acts of self-expression and that's just super cool. So I'm, um, um, you know, every once in a while I'm like realizing um, while I'm appreciating this incredible sort of grassroots uh, community that's, that's sprung up um, around Shopify, I, I, I would love to, you know, I, I, I'm the number one fan <laughs> as well as getting to, uh, you know, build Shopify itself. And so, um, um, you know, I just, uh, I reached out and said, Hey, there's sort of many reasons why we should, uh, um, chat. And so here we are. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And to say, we, we were lucky enough that, you know, you, you spent enough time on Twitter that at some point you stumbled across something that, that sparked enough interest. So thank you. I for, am, as they for say, very internet. <laughs> 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 and it's not a good thing it's like uh it's, but it's yeah. a thing um yes i i, I spent too much time on um twitter and X and so on uh yeah well, we we've got a bunch of uh, fun technical conversation we want to get into with you today because obviously that's our audience that's what we're interested in but before we jump too deep in there i do have a couple softball warm-up questions for you toby hope All you right. don't mind taylor uh so toby you and i are both children of the 80s um and so I want to know, are you familiar with uh, an American cinematic classic titled Real Genius? No, I'm not. 1985, stars Val Kilmer. Oh, I don't. That's I'm very into it, but not very cinema. I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. Well, that's my favorite <laughs> movie of all time, and I was, was going to get you to say it too. But check it out. I think you would enjoy it. Real Genius. I will. I will. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a rousing um, um, recommendation. So thank you. If you like sarcasm and like popcorn, you'll love the movie. Uh, um, I love it. <laughs> okay so i mean that was me, like the popcorn this is a debate in my household well like I, I i'm still look it's very very i i, I live like exactly half my life in canada in north america now uh, um but man i just popcorn ought to be sugared it's just like i i cannot really the, 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 sugar the, the salt thing absolutely it's <laughs> you're a kettle corn guy huh not even say kettle corn, corn right okay oh. huh? well okay well let's just go like um... bits, let's go <laughs> <laughs> I also think pineapple should be on pizza. So, like, if yeah, yeah, just, get it all out get, there. Get like, out of here. Get it all oh, out there. man. Yeah, this is not going good. how I thought it was going to go. He's, he's, this is... He's got a sweet tooth, yeah. <laughs> yeah this is like, like, just, just turn this into a Toby roast. Why not? That's right. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay, my second attempt to relate to you is in the see if this one works. All right, so <laughs> you obviously like video games. And I, I read, I think, on Wikipedia that you used to read John Carmack's plan files. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, 
did you go through a phase as well, again, back to the 80s, 90s thing, of, do you remember books like Secrets of the Game Programming Gurus, VGMO 13 Hex? Yeah. 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 That so you're into all that. What did you do? Did you do a project? Did you actually write a game at some point? I didn't, but like I, 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 um, so I, I had this, I had so many opportunities to go into video game programming and I, I just had this mental block on, I don't, I, I wanted to keep video games a hobby and I, I just, have, I, I, I don't, it's like early advice on work-life balance, which was probably garbage, but sort of warmed itself <laughs> dearly, very deeply into my, um, um, uh, psyche and I mean wasn't really um, not an obstacle in the end um, was that like um, if, if there's something like you you really really like love like you know if you study music you start being a music critic and it's like it actually starts uh, being harder to um, uh, appreciate music is, is what my uh, co-founder Daniel always said he, he studied music um, um, I always thought this was sad I didn't want that to happen with video games so I never did but I did I, I, I deeply study uh, um, video game um, innovation culture, um, the books, the types of engineering, I, I, like my side project, especially with my children now, um, when, when we do like Saturday evening uh, programming are usually uh, simple games. So like, um, but it's, it's not like 3D engines, like uh, on, right. you know, unworthy hardware um, that, um, um, you know, this is was the, um, the topics of these kind of books. But yeah, like it's, um, like I, I feel like video games are, um, I mean, I think fundamentally video games are simulations, right? Like, and, and um, like these good ones, they are simulations of something that needs to be explored. It's like every uh, video game that I uh, enjoy is a video game that has to be approached with not just um, um, I need to relax and kick back, but rather with a deep sense of curiosity because you're actually trying to, uh, you know, build a, a, like a map of how to succeed in it. You, you, you often the rules are not clear. Um, the rules are sort of emergent as you're doing it. So like the story might advance thinking of something like a, you know, an open world game or something like Zelda. Or so you just don't you, like there's there's almost no guidelines, um, but you sort of um, uh, figure it out. And and um, so there's a couple of aspects about this which I think are fundamentally like like more interesting than is immediately apparent. Such as um, one is um, everything about video games hard. Like, like n there's no simple video games. Like the simplest video game. Like you, you could replace all of Super Mario if you wanted with like an I win button. That's <laughs> that's no friction. Um, ought to be instantly. Um, um, uh, you know, like like uh, I think Harvard Business School would say that like removing all the friction from video game would be a good thing. But yet, obviously, the difficulty is actually the thing that is. Um, um, like learning difficult, worthwhile thing that are imme of, of immediate use, especially in a tight feedback cycle, is is, 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 is is a fascinating thing. The other thing is the player is often an, uh, like a like a, an agent that is able to um, um, you know make decisions, and the simulation will uh, change around them. Like your decisions matter in a way that like it becomes apparent either immediately or, or shortly thereafter. And I think. It, it must do a very different thing to you um, spending your childhood in a highly agentic enabled um, um, entertainment medium rather than being a passive uh, observer of, 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 of uh, you know, priors like television or radio or so. And I think that's, um, um, you know, I, I actually see this all the way into if, um, people I work with. It, it's, it's, it's surprisingly easy to um, uh, predict if people were, played video games a lot as uh, like in, in their teens, um, even with executives in a company like Shopify, just because um, there, there just is this sort of playfulness of like changing variables that is like kind of innate to you. Like it's, it's like cool, this thing, I mean, obviously the stakes are higher and we don't have a reload button, but like, um, you know, like changing something is often the first thing that comes to mind rather than uh, when something isn't working, rather than Let's just keep trying it. <laughs> and um, I, I find that, um, like, uh, I, I, I think about this a lot because, like, I don't think video games are sort of appreciated in society and even in, in anywhere close to the, ro in the role they're actually playing. Um, and um, if, you, if, you, if you go through the public company uh, founder CEOs that are still active, um, like the entire, uh, at least in technology industry, the entire set is video game players. Like, it's, it's like everyone is... Um, you know, uh, Zark is a god tier civilization player, <laughs> um, because of course he is. And um, um, uh, you know, like so, it's it's surprisingly common. 
Anyway, I, I, it's, it's, I think it's a fun topic, but maybe yeah. not exactly what's on this uh, on the label of this podcast. <laughs> oh, so, sorry. I, um, but... your, your, your quick questions also are kind of like fizzling out here. Like, I, I, <laughs> you probably have to like stop me if I'm going on too long. It's okay. Um, it's okay. But <laughs> I, I think what's good to know as a developer, though, when you guys work with Shopify, if you find it to be difficult, it's because Toby is making a game out of it. He can make no, it easier. Because it's like, but no, I, so this is really important, actually. Like, like think about, I mean, okay, you're, you're named after Liquid. So like, like Liquid's template engine in Shopify, which I wrote. Um, and it's... Um, like it, it's built to be like like at least on day like uh, from day one to be um, aesthetically pleasing. That was important to me. Like that's it's sort of a weird goal. Like computer yeah. science doesn't actually allow for aesthetics. Like at least in the sort of gnarly bits of compiler design and so on. Um, it's a little bit more normal in the Ruby world, but outside of that, it's like it, that's that's essentially unacknowledged. Um, um, and it's also meant to be. Um, you know, you should look, be able to look under the hood and understand what's going on. It's actually like, hey, um, when 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 you go and like say, okay, well, my store is there. I like it. I want something to be different. I'm gonna go and uh, like the editor, which now exists, which didn't exist in the first versions of Shopify, um, um, and 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 you can't make the thing work that you want because it's like unique to you and your business. Well. There's a click away that you can go and say, okay, well, what, where does this come from? Like, and, and that's when you encounter Liquid. And my hope is that this looks um, surprising, but somewhat curiosity uh, inducing. Like something about that is like, yeah, like I remember having heard about HTML. I, I sort of, I, I mean, I, I recognize that over here is a headline, which I know is on the website. Like if I put like some words below it, what happens and then you're hooked because then one step at a time now um you you can sort of explore the space and we want to make this really safe because you can't like just break shopify uh like with this i mean you can't break your theme i suppose but like um it's like the, we give you every um reload button possible um and, and every staging environment you want and um all the way to dev shops and everything and so um it is the same thing, right? Like I think I think this is where I'm saying this is actually such an important thing to, for people to reconcile with. Um that um it's not um it's it's not uh difficulty um um and friction that people actually dislike. It's it's like I mean friction shapes the world often in very, very bad ways because it's again it's 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 not conscientiously designed. But I think what you want to do is you want to make something like Shopify a fairly gradual climb. Like you don't like eventually you have to be this good to build a business and you have to learn a lot. Like this, it's just one of the craziest things you can set yourself out to do because of I mean you you guys have a sense of this. Like the amount of things you have to be good at um to 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 yeah. build a successful business is massive, right? Like and um um but in our experience, um and we did a lot with data uh, along those lines because I you know Shopify has uh, millions of success stories and millions of failure stories. And so uh, we get to analyze them to build our own mental model about what, what it takes to a business success. And of course, this changes uh, with all sorts of variables that are outside of our control and the timing and so uh, and, and the period of the internet as well. But there's like common things uh, about failures. Um, so the successes look different and individual, but with, um, although they have commonalities, the, the failures are um, all the same. They are that at a low point, at some point, some, maybe something happened outside of Shopify, maybe something happened to the supplier, maybe something happened with um, some, some kind of setback early in the process. They encountered something that was in, like usually in Shopify that was just one notch too, 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 too much, right? Like it's like something was just slightly too much friction. If you think about this from, a, from like, like, let's go with video games. If you think about this from a Super Mario perspective, it's like the, like a side scroller, let's say. You, you're, you're like slowly climbing um, the difficulty. That's what you want. You want like, you, you want you, a gradual, like upwards is, uh, movement is fine. What you don't want is like suddenly encountering like a, uh, like, like a, one of those brick walls that you just can't jump over. You just don't like you, there's no hidden, thing to jump on and jump off like you just like like you churn out you stop and frankly people of course for very good reasons hate to uh encounter this because no one ends up in that moment really blaming shopify it's actually people blame themselves for being in it sure. and i actually disagree with that i think it's actually shopify's fault um it's our job to make that not happen and so we um i i think 
the way like the way we are thinking about it is we cannot change um uh where you have to end up or where, where you want to go and in fact i think it's worthwhile pursuit because of all the learning that's like uh, implied here but um what we can do is we can make the climb more gradual um we can we can make it so that you know when i started by snow devil back in 2004 uh, 20 years ago i had to like take my passport and and and, and um actually mail it to uh um american fork utah for to to get an authorized net account like they didn't recognize even uh like uh, copies um um like uh, like all of it I, they, they asked me if I, like like i asked if i could fax it which was still the thing and they said no we actually need the original because usually people would actually go there to negotiate with them but it was simply not a process they had to actually even uh, build up to it for, for dealing with anything remotely and so that's where internet we have came from and like the internet shop is rebelling against uh, and, and and i mean we've made a huge amount of pro progress there like you can start companies on apis you can start you being underwritten by shopify based on what you're doing so anyway um i'm very passionate about this because again i i think the more entrepreneurs think correctly i think about the uh, the job of um making like what is implied by a great product it's like it's not the i win button that, that people want right like the people want the best possible thing that helps them um do things that even they had potentially doubts about could they actually do it right that's tools at their best they, they shape us in a way and they inspire us to 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 actually reach higher than what we otherwise would and i think um in in as much as this ever happens on shopify i i'm, I'm incredibly proud of these situations because that's my, that's been my, my life's work to um build software that uh, can um have other people feel this sort of sense of entitled uh, not entitlement sense of empowerment um uh that um um you know I, I felt because of particular technical skills that i had the programming and um uh like when i started my own store and i could build my own thing i want everyone else to have the same kind of uh, agency with, with, with shopify well taylor do you want to bring it back to I mean, we started talking about liquid there and one of the first things you wanted to get into was kind of how liquid all happened so i'll yeah. let you take well that and i didn't know if you wanted to do your origin story we can always like you know, come back to this or what have you, but you know, as, as, as far as you, you touched on it, cause there's, there's this whole idea back in what, like 2004, you know, right. We're going, we're going this far back and, you know, we've all, we've heard the snow devil story and kind of like these, these higher level kind of ideas of the, the fun, uh, parts of that or what have you. But I don't, I don't feel like even when we were trying to like research this a little bit ahead of time, um, you know, just obviously you, you, you wrote liquid. And so there's, but there's not a whole lot about, you know, how that, turned into Shopify, right? Like how mm -hmm. we all know it's critical, you know, it's, it, it's part of that. Um, and even, you know, the back and forth I've heard liquid referred to as a templating language you've, and also a templating engine, which is, it sounds like you prefer templating engine. So I don't know as far as wh where, where's the best place to start? Oh, I like, never did... thought about the difference between those two things. I probably really, think really? totally interchangeable. Um, I think, I think the engine is like executes the thing and the templates are the things we are getting to execute. So, but like, mm -hmm. um, um, just two sides of the same thing, but that's fascinating. Never thought mm -hmm. about this. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, I don't know if you can dig into that a little bit as far as, you know, cause that's, you know, you, you saw a problem big enough, but then you decided that, that you needed a templating engine. You saw, you know, what, what eventually became liquid is like the, you know, end goal, but you, you saw a problem, um, and then liquid kind of came out of the solutions to that. So how did, how did that start? Yeah. Um, so. Okay, so 2004 was Snow Devil start. Um, um, you know, again, Snow Devil, I, I, you know, I tried a bunch of software like OS Commerce and so on. Magento didn't even exist. Um, I, I, I sort of imagined, like, I, I think this is well documented. Like, I, I looked around because I didn't think the e-commerce software was actually the thing I uh, that that um, um, would be hard to uh, acquire because .dot com before that and so on. It, like, everyone did e-commerce, so I figured that this was well understood and well tooled. Um, and then it wasn't, and then. Um, 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 but I, I had this sort of incredible, like from a, as an engineer, I had this sort of sense of, um, profound, um, realization of, um, uh, freedom when I realized that, man, like all my programming before that was not really on the web. Um, a lot of, some of it was sort of incidentally, but most of it was desktop software, desktop software really like um you you have to ship something to everyone before you you, you basically have to work on tool set to at least then you had to work on toolkits that um that sort of native to the platform you were targeting so you basically had to make a million decisions ahead of time um and um, um then you kind of had to sort of 
try to do the best with what you got. And then the beauty of a web, especially during this time, was like, cool, um, you, any machine connected to the internet that has an IP address can listen to port A, um, which was only one relevant before we figured out how to do HTTPS properly. Um, and um, um, if it would respond in uh, something that like at least seems like an HTML file, then, uh, you know, then you're good. Here's the realization. I can, I own everything about, like, uh, uh, like anything that can um, respond to port 80, I can use now. I, I'm actually completely unconstrained by any priors. I don't need to use Java, if, which I didn't like during the time. And I don't, I don't, I, no one's telling me what to do. So, um, you know, um, so I ended up like just using Ruby because I loved it. It's like this like, it was barely translated during this time. So right? like, it was a crazy choice. Of, of well, that was a risky choice in two thousand four. Very, very risky. Wasn't... But I didn't yeah. like. I also didn't think I'd ever. I, uh, I I would ever need anyone else to understand anything I'm doing here <laughs> because um, so, um, um, uh, you know, because I was making Snowdev for me, right? Like, I, like I, I'm like, okay, this is my. I'm going to be us like going full selfish mode because this is like. You know, I'm gonna make my own business. And I'm not gonna compromise based on what anyone else thinks. This is exactly the thing I was trying to um, get away from. Yeah. And so, um, um, uh, I uh, so I used Ruby, and um, um, uh, that was like just like I, I had just a blast. Um, I, in fact, I part of the reason why I was building Snow Devil is because I actually lost my appreciation for programming during the time i just part of, and, and now i now it's was because i was told how to program and how to do it and i didn't get um sort of agency that i um was craving and the moment i i i used ruby and like it's always felt to me like again I, I, this is not actually about ruby this is about language founder or language programmer fit is a thing like product market fit right like it's mm -hmm. um uh, like I think my brain I discovered has just always ran run on Ruby and uh, every <laughs> other um, language I've ever gotten in front of me, um, um, it, it just felt like I had to like translate what the beautiful things are in my mind into um, um, you know something that I could actually share by you know like I, I had an oil painting in my mind I got crayons so like I, I just like <laughs> it's never going to lead to anything good. No. Um, when you say Ruby, do you also mean Rails as well? Or are you sucking so specifically Rails about Ruby yet? Okay. Like this pre rails, right? So, okay. um, um, so, so I, I was in love with Ruby first, and then, um, 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 you could make Ruby work sort of on in a, in a web context, it like ship with you know enough like sure. building point building blocks. Um, uh, so, so I, I, I was working on this, and then, yeah, you were right, like very quickly after this decision, like uh, we were hanging out in the ISC, but like. David Hanneman Hansen at DHH is like said, "Hey, I wrote a web framework and I put in product. Uh, I'm putting it in production with this thing called Basecamp, and Basecamp looked really cool. And um, um, uh, so um, anyway, so so I, I I used this and I just like, man, this is like a beautiful extension of everything I like about Ruby to the web. And like, obviously, I'm gonna just use that and." You know, I, I got involved with that and, and worked on that too. So like, I just like, basically I got all my joy and light and back in programming, like in super fast order along the way, um, um, launched like Snow Devil, which then, you know, I, I again, I wrote for me, it didn't have like an admin interface, like I could use the Rails console and um, um, it didn't need a template engine because I trusted my <laughs> like your B files. So, you know, like, right. um, mm -hmm. so, so um, uh, you know, easier world. I think this is also kind of like the, the difference in effort, I underestimated the difference in effort between writing um, general software and, uh, and bespoke software. Um, bespoke software, is, I, I think it's like a t like 10% as hard um, um, because um, you, which actually um, is not to put down bespoke software. I think people should write a lot more bespoke software part because you can do it in 10% of the time if you don't have to like generalize every problem, right? Like Shopify builds a lot of internal bespoke software using Rails um, for a way we work together, for, for the way we communicate. Like, like this, most of the internal stack in Shopify is, is homebrew because of this realization. So I finished Snow Devil. Um, uh, I made, mean to go on as a retailer, but eventually like realized I just felt so much in love with the thing that I discovered <laughs> building there that I just like, like I, I want to, I, I should make a business that's like, like this base camp thing, but it's just like, so like it really base camp feels like web 2.0 starting point from business model. Like people sort of credit usually Gmail um, from this time, mm -hmm. but like 
Gmail did figure out a lot of what we ended up doing in the browsers, but not really like uh, like um, this sort of independent business charge like free plans, um, um, monthly, no login, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, uh, and a, a particular aesthetic and web design that just also was very modern at the time, um, I think still feels reasonably fresh and so on and so on. So, um, you know, that fit like a glove to what I wanted to do. Um, and um, the one thing sort of to bring this long speech home to the actual question that you're asking, um, my initial plan was, um, you know, to build like an admin interface um, that was really good and just like make this like base camp quality uh, um, um, software. My own um, um, website was running on WordPress, which is also software of that time. Um, um, and um, uh, and that was open source and hackable. And that was also really, really good because you, you could tinker with the designs and so on. So that, that was another influence. Oh, it's hackable but, already. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hackable, <laughs> yeah. I, I use the, um, um, the positive sum version yeah. of hackable. <laughs> you know, like as, 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 a, as a term of endearment, not a, <laughs> making a statement about security practices. Um, but your point is well taken. Um, but, um, um, I, my initial plan was. Um, to there was a, there's a website called CSS Zen Garden, which mm -hmm. is uh, either going to um, remind people of something, uh, fond memories of, or you, people will have no idea what I'm talking about, and then um, uh, they will look it up and still don't get why this is actually of any kind of significance. Um, um, like this is this is actually CSS Zen Garden is written by uh, Dave Sher. Um, um, who actually works at Shopify these days, which, you know, sometimes leads to very funny um, when I'm, you know, like, I don't know, like I, I tell these stories and then um, actually I, I told the story literally at a town hall at some point or some, in some, some environment. And then Dave said, oh, I didn't realize you liked my website. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, you did. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of, this kind of situation me. that happens if you put together like an ama a company with amazing individuals everywhere. So this is like, I love this. Anyway, so CSS Zen Garden was a website that, um, uh, had very uh, well-crafted uh, semantic, they called it um, HTML, and then you could upload new CSS files. It was meant to be an exploration of how far you can push design uh, through just new browser features and, and really convinced mm -hmm. everyone at the beginning of the Web 2.0 period that CSS was a technology worth betting on, which is so funny to say now. And um, so I thought given this experience that um, just allowing people to edit CSS would be enough for um, customizability. Um, and, uh, you know, as so often, you know, plan meets reality. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, just like, it, it just simply wasn't enough. Uh, it was exactly good for CSS Zen Garden, but like, like, I really wanted and was clamoring for something to, you know, hack on, like, like templates that I can change. Because again, I mean, and this might be too broad a statement, but it, it does feel like you're losing sovereignty of your business if you if you give if you yield too much, especially ex uh, ability to express yourself. And I think the website is one of the things you can own on the internet. I mean, it's not of any many things you own on the internet. Like you can own your domain, and then therefore you can point it at whoever is a convenient host, and then it can be your design, which you make choices, and literally no one can tell you what not to. Actually, I suppose the European Union can tell you if you need to be better. But outside of that, no one has figured out how to, how, how to actually um, uh, restrict your, your sovereignty of what you can do there. And so it just was very clear to me that like, this is what some, like Shopify needs to figure out how to work like Basecamp, like so that we can have always have it um, on the latest version, continuously work on because this is a fun project that I can see myself do for the rest of my life. Um, uh, and I think it's a good separation of tasks between like nerds that get excited about commerce and networks and internet and um, uh, small businesses that actually just should be very good at making products that we all love and delight in. Um, I, I don't think these things must mix um, otherwise. So this seemed like a good idea and was something I would have wanted to find. And therefore I was um, convinced that was an important thing. And then, um, um, but you need to have like give the businesses, like small businesses, the sovereignty to like express themselves and their brand in exactly the way they want. So 2005, um, was uh, RubyConf and I think San Diego, which uh, from Ottawa is, you know, 
three flights and therefore like 14, 16 hours of travel um, for me because I was like sort of running the milk run of cheapest flights. Um, and um, so I, I, I just, but I, I was wondering how I could get the most value out of RubyConf. This was the first sort of programming conference I ever went to. And um, I, I, I just like had this problem statement, like how can I be as um, hackable and as improvable as, as, as WordPress open source software in general, while also being hosted yeah, safely. And so, um, so I decided like on the fly, just like write, like, or try things so I could like, when I run in any of the kind of people who really, really know these answers, I can actually like have a really good conversation with them. But that's like um, high throughput. Um, and I, I ended up writing Ruby, like, 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 uh, sorry, I ended up writing uh, uh, Liquid on a flight. Um, it was kind of done by the time we landed. Like, it oh. just like, it's, it's, um, it did everything I was hoping it could do by the end. Um, and um, I, I, I did travel, I, I bought, uh, I was inspired to buy the, the Dragon book, uh, which is a, a book that's known to a lot of programmers about compiler design and, um, and so on. Um, that was helpful in certain instances, although um, I can tell you there's a fairly sizable team at Shopify, um, which is the Liquid VM team, that um, literally all of them wish I would have actually read it cover to cover before <laughs> I would have started because they're just like so annoyed with the irregularities oh. in the grammar and like um, if, if it's even possible to write a grammar for it and so on and so on. So I, I still get I, I still get grief for my uh, inadequacies there, um, nice. but um, it's also kind of has worked. So that's that's been that's been delightful. Now the liquid that's there today is not the liquid that's running. Of course, this has been rewritten many many times by vastly better programmers. <laughs> but it's, um, uh, uh, you know that's where it came from. I'm going to tell you one more thing, and I'm really sorry for the sort of monologue here, but like um, you, you, you're just pulling on things like that I don't get to talk about, and like I find. I'm excited about these things. And um, there was still a chicken egg problem, right? Which, um, uh, again, at this point, it was me and one other programmer, uh, co founder. We, we were working all the way to um, when we launched Shopify for beta. And um, 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 my, the other programmer, Daniel, was um, also our designer. Um, but, like, he, he just, like, he He's one of those people who just learns anything. Like when he needs to know something, he just shows up on Monday knowing it. It's like <laughs> never seen anyone learn this quickly. Um, but time was very limited, and we really need, had a lot of programming to do. So like we were trying to figure out how to actually get. Like when we launch, we need to have themes, right? Like we we got and we need something to right chicken neck problem. Um, so and this is one of my absolute favorite um, uh, all nighter hacks. Um, I end up like pulling all of uh, like the template engine out of uh, Shopify's code base into a new project. Um, I created like a set of fixtures, like 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 I created a a binary installable simulator of all of Shopify um, um, that would have like um, a series of products and like collections and and all this stuff. And you could download this. This is called Vision. Um, you could download this onto your computer. Uh, have you ever heard of Vision? Did, mm -hmm. Are you familiar with no, this? No, I okay. haven't. So just like in the annals of Shopify, um, um, this is not really written in because it ended up not being like like super needed uh, after we launched. But like um, what we did is we, could, we, we created um, like this thing. You could download it. You started it. You pointed at a directory. It filled it with em empty templates. And then you could write on it and just like you had a local web server. And for m many, many people, this was the first time they ended up ever doing local development for something. And um, then we launched a competition that, um, um, <laughs> which tells you um, something about the times. Um, the first place was like a MacBook Pro. And then we had like five iPod minis. As, like, <laughs> and just like... At this date, just submit your themes, and if you include them, uh, like in in Shopify, um, uh, then uh, you get a prize. We forgot like that. So, um, and people did. And um, actually, a couple of years ago, I was with, uh, visiting friends in um, uh, San Francisco. I didn't even know this, but uh, in his car, he was showing me the the, the, the um, iPod Mini 
with a uh, um, shop for Qantas window engraving. Nice. It was like really cool artifact. So, um, you know, we're, we're still around. Um, what were the constraints for those things? Was it the first version of Liquid plus did you already expose some Liquid optics via Shopify for them to yeah. use in the themes? Okay. Yeah, so it um, it was static. So it wasn't like full online store. It was just like static. Like there was a big YAML file somewhere that like was um, the product, the variants. Um, um, there was like multiple sets of them. So you could switch between snowboards and other products. And um, um, you could, um, um, yeah, you could visit every one of the original, uh, you know, sites like the, the collections, even stuff like the oil collection and, um, um, uh, you know, product pages, blog page, article, that's it, uh, and front page index, index uh, liquid. So, um, yeah, it was actually pretty good. I, I mean, honestly, there's, there's an alternative world where we would have pursued this further. Like, I, I think that would have been a good world. I, 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 it's, what Liquid can do now is extremely complex and like there's a huge amount of um, context for every session, like which country, like you can have catalogs in catalogs and rules by which catalogs are changed and whatnot. Um, um, and uh, it would be very hard to replicate all this uh, locally for testing, but like it's um, um, at the time it was a lot more static and it was a really, really neat tool. Yeah. This is, like if you go to an internet archive, you can find vision.shopify dot com i think and, and, and it's, it's 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 i mean it will look very much of its time but it's cool um um interesting yeah liquid looks deceptively simple at first glance but when you realize the context that goes into making a multinational and all the other things you have to do the different sessions and stuff like it's exceedingly complex it is i i, I wish it was um um, I, I'm really in, like looking forward to starting to work a little bit on, on, on involving its syntax further. Just uh, like we, we've been in like many, many years of, um, infrastructure building for, for liquid and obviously we've been making changes to it as you know, but like, uh, at times and implement the features, but I think liquid can, uh, I think there's another speed for liquid that, uh, we, we, we can, we can get to, um, but we need the liquid VMs to stabilize, uh, like we have been working extremely hard on, on replicating all the store from stores to all the edge nodes around the world and, um, um, making liquid rendering extremely efficient so that we can run it increasingly on machines closer to people. We really, really would like to render every store that is hosted with us within physically like, or within, um, 50, 10 of 50 to hundred milliseconds of you know, literally everyone will purchase on Shopify, which is basically every internet user. So like, um, or, or in, in, in most countries anyway. Um, and, um, so, so a lot of work goes into that. I, I, I'm prioritizing this just because performance is like the actual killer feature. It's like the feedback cycles that we talked about and so on. Um, but, um, uh, you know, the language could also just be like, I know how to make it better. <laughs> I'm itching to get, get back to that. So you brought up in that story a little bit um, the idea of being self-hosted versus hosted. So can you talk a little bit about that early decision? Because it seemed like that was something you were probably wrestling with at some point, which was that model and which way to go. Yeah, I I was um, I didn't think I didn't end up thinking too hard on it. I I just thought the practice of getting everyone to have like it's just like not everyone should like host their own um uh software like it, it would be nice if it's an option but really um hedging in for running in different environments is very costly like if this is like another one like that means not just your software has to work for all businesses actually your software has to run on all sorts of configurations of servers with like caches being broken or not available or like like in, you end up having to spend so much time not making commerce better, but just making it so that it, like people could self-install it on the servers. I was considering it, but like I, I, I just felt the internet would very quickly converge on um, let companies be experts in 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 in, in hosting and scaling. Um, and uh, so so it, it was, that wasn't that big of a, a discussion. I, there was a moment where I thought I should follow the open source model, but that must mostly. Um, Mostly once I uh, like 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 Liquid got really good, and I knew that um, the front end at least would be um, 
uh, as customizable as I would have wanted to find it um, as a user. Um, I, I knew this was going to work. I, I, I always had the ambition to also make the business logic customizable in the same way as like, you know, front ends, because that's where Shopify has traditionally been a lot more static. That took a lot longer to figure out how to do, but like, I'm pretty happy with what we have with Shopify functions now. We had a scripts and then there's a scripts v2 and like, it's like, we had a couple of tries because this ambition has been as old as liquid itself. Um, but, um, um, that's a gnarly hard problem to make secure and scalable, especially. So, um, now, now we, now we have one. And so I, I think it's one of the best things about plus is that you can just kind of, um, now you don't even have, like, e even if you need to overwrite many of the business processes with stuff that is very, very, very custom to you, um, you can do it, but the way we enable it to do doing it is means you are not on a hook for the scalability related to it, which is like, we, we can do this. And I think that's, um, I mean, that has succeeding on that has definitely sort of landed this particular plane, which I think we started in uh, with, with creation of Liquid, like literally 15 years earlier. Um, and I'm, I'm now I'm definitely very convinced that this is a way to go. Um, so, this is actually my way. A lot of software in the software as a service and business space, I don't think has fully um, incorporated, I think, very this particular idea that Shopify uh, pursued because it's it's worked spectacularly well. And I think using WebAssembly to um, replace uh, sort of these places of fairly aesthetical or like, or, or just at least business unique um, decision-making is actually an exceptionally good way of um, building software for businesses. So I really wanted to dig into the functions and the business logic and all that sort of stuff, but I want to make sure uh, before we leave liquid land too far behind, is there anything else you wanted to touch on in that story? Um, Taylor, do you have any other know, questions like or Toby, just, is there anything else? It, it just worked. And I, I also don't want to overstate it. Like I was a pretty rotten programmer. Like, like <laughs> I, I did not, I, I, I like, I mean, rotten programmer. I, I, I knew how to build uh, everything I needed for Shopify, which was adequate then. Um, but I, it, it's not like I was top tier um, going into this. I part of the reason why I went into this is because I just, like loved the challenge of learning and I knew like it's better to kind of sink or swim on these kind of things. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, like taking it one step at a time. And, you know, again, if, if you're good, if, like if you build, if, if you, if you're reasonably a generalist, um, and, um, have good aesthetics, it's amazing what you can build, um, <laughs> uh, alone and, um, or with very, very small teams. And then, um, um, I think that's getting even more true as we're going now with the power of, you know, GitHub Copilots and, and, and LLMs in general, being able to bounce questions off or sidekicks and whatnot. So that's cool. That is cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I had a couple of liquid specific things. If yeah. you want to dig though into functions, sure. I know you're very excited and chomping at the bit. So we got time, though, I think. We can yeah, always let's, circle let's, back let's, around. Let's, let's, we stay on liquid. I, I, that's, that's yeah, they stay on liquid. Yeah. yeah. Take a seat, Carl. Toby said it was fine. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> like, so, I, I mean, I think a lot of the questions that I had were more so, you know, just in general. Like, we, you talked about, like, seeing this problem and just like, oh, yeah, like, I just cranked this out kind of type thing. And maybe not top tier at the time, but, like, you know, I, I could build it because I, I was building what I needed kind of type thing at the time. Uh, but also like in that, you know, me coming from, I came from a very non-technical background. And so to me, that's something that is, I don't know, super interesting or amazing not to like oversell it or, you know, try to say so much. So one way or another kind of type thing that you just saw a problem and decide, I'm just going to create this whole templating engine uh, to fix this problem or what have you. Um, so, mm -hmm. so t I think that was more so my thought with, you know, you picked how you picked Ruby specifically other than like, this is just what, were there, were there thoughts or considerations for, I need to pick something else or it was just always going to be Ruby anyways, when, when you were writing liquid and then from there, I, I think we kind of like glazed over this, like I just cranked it out, you know? And like, I, how did you arrive to that point where this is what I'm going to make and the problems that you had, you know, where you saw this is the best solution. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I like I, what I love so much about programming is that so much like it's, it's the, Program is incredibly honest work in in a way that you have to understand the problem domain, otherwise you can't solve the problems, right? Like, and and um, it's then delightful in the way that um, if you really under like um, once you really understand the problems, you will also 
like you have the ability to spot solutions that are just simplifying and and I, I, like i I've, I've, I've to me this is like a huge source of dopamine to like um realize that i i i've learned a topic or an understand an area enough to um spot new options or new ways through them that might 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 be um maybe other people spot it too but they decided to not go and like uh, dedicate themselves to it because you know like you obviously have to make a choice of if you want to put the book in it because again it's honest book you know like at some point you're, you're making things with your hands like uh even though it's, it feels a little bit abstract at times so um like again the ruby choice was um uh, like it, it would have been PHP, Ruby, or C sharp at the time, um, um, and um, I think all of them would have been viable choices. Um, um, uh, and um, uh, at least for me, I eliminated uh, Java because of the state of Java on these times. Now Java would be perfectly fine too. Um, um, and um, the um, again, this I think it's really important. Like this was so much for me a reach for independence that I actually wanted to cash in the independence right at first decision um, because Ruby was not a sane choice from any kind of business evaluation, but an incredibly important choice for me because it it's a, a tremendous amount of work to build uh, a software all the way into production that can be like used by people around the world. Um, um, it's very exposing. Like it's like it's just like all, all your, your all, literally all your inadequacies will be listed. Um, and it's like so. It's it's, it's like one of those uh, things. Like it's it's there's a million good reasons for stopping, um, and sometimes you don't see the reasons for keep going. Um, so after I realized that Ruby itself was such a lasting delight to use and discover and play with, and again like again ruby is just like uh, to me and again i also have to say this like it, this is ruby to me this is like you can't make uh such um subjective statements about uh languages because there is such a thing as programmer language fit um um and um so i think what made it work in a very real way was ruby i don't think it would have Shopify could have existed without ruby because it was the energy source of my motivation like it's it just like whenever i am like okay fuck now i have to um you know build csv export um or whatever <laughs> like it's just like like no one's gonna write songs about a C csv importer right like it's just like it's not like the storied part of the hero's journey um well but you can do something you, you can what would look like to make the most beautiful you know just like you know like just that alone it's like okay well what is my angle here like what can i what can i do and what can i explore and what how can i uh, motivate myself with some kind of goal of my own that aligns with the goals of my business or my business i'm trying to build and i i, I don't know this is maybe like more of a statement of my, my own psychology but like i just found it's so clearly load bearing for uh, Shopify's existence to um, um, use use Ruby and learn from Ruby and be inspired by uh, by, by Ruby and Rails specifically. I find the decisions that um, David made putting Rails together were astonishingly good for the time. Like it, they, are, they have proven out so tremendously for such a long period of time now, and. Um, none of them were obvious they were all correct and i i i make a study of unobvious but correct uh, i think um, the best products and companies are all unobvious but wind up being seen as correct um in the end so um that was also like motivating and then rails and ruby both had um, a great ascendancy and became much more important pieces of a uh, you know global internet um milieu and so um, that was lucky and you know in a, in a way i i, I could even had that through validating it through software build, but also work on Rails framework um, for a while. My, most of my work on Rails framework was limited to um, adding the features I needed to build Shopify, basically, right? So, like in a, in a way, like I, I just love like open source is giving gifts to people, and um, um, I receive gift like like I don't think Shopify paid for software until. Um, for the first 10 years or so um like we were just like everything was open source <clears throat> and um so we received a tremendous amount of gifts and so even today like i think it's very important for us to uh you know give back like i 
we, we, um, we sponsor a lot of open source projects. We have a lot of open source projects. We work on making Ruby as good as possible, which is, you know, we, do, we, we could do for our own purposes or we could fork it, but like we do it as a community for everyone. Um, so we are doing, instead of a 10% work of bespoke work, we do the 100% of make the entire platform better. And I think that's, that's really important to me because we want to give back. Um, is and, that part uh, of the reason too you decided to open source Liquid? Because initially, right, like you, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what open source looked like before GitHub. I saw the initial, you know, commit everything moved over to GitHub was back in two thousand eight. Uh, I think is what what I oh, yeah. scrolled all the way back through those to to find or what have you. But is that that's kind of what led to that that desire to make sure it was open source? Yeah, but but even um, I think more even where it's like it's it's like in the Ruby community everything's MIT licensed. MIT ba license basically is just like like you do you <laughs> like do anything goes whatever like turn it in a commercial thing um it's it's a gift it's like it's it's not like you know there's lots, lots of licenses and I, uh, all of them are important and good and and and, and are used in different uh, circumstances but like there, there's a purity to the gift giving like i mean we are getting a new version of ruby from uh maths every christmas morning <laughs> right like it's it's new version is always released december 25th it's like gift giving is um I think that's a little bit of a Japanese, like, I, I think this is a, even the Japanese influence um, here on Ruby is a Japanese language. Um, um, and uh, so, I, I, you know, like, look, I, I was 24 when I started Shopify. I uh, um, um, spent time in my teens doing, building open source software, even before we sort of had formalized licenses um, and definitely sharing code with everyone before we had the term. Um, and so, I mean, I think I spent a lot of my formative years with open source. I learned programming from John Carmack's plan files that he sort of openly shared, but also like from the discussions in the Linux kernel mailing lists where people were discussing open source software. So I think that inspired us all. It's, oh. it's hard to believe how unobvious I think open source is. Like, like mm -hmm. it's just like, it's so surprising that open source is part of the world. Like, if you really think about it, like how path dependent the world is, this is sometimes I find this really, really humbling because, um, you know, like it's so much of best software in the world is now open source. It's like you, it's, it's hard to imagine to reach for commercial software for, for, for the most load bearing parts of, um, uh, um, uh, at least server infrastructure. Um, we're getting free databases that the dot com guys had to, like, you know, you had, if you wanted a tech company, the first thing you had to raise is a couple million dollars. So you could show up at Larry Ellison and give him a million of those to have Oracle. And then um, uh, that, that was your start, your opening gambit. Um, 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 then you could write, start writing code. Um, you compare that to today and there's an embarrassment of the riches, like Postgres today is a million times better than Oracle was back then. Um, so, um, and then you have 50 other choices that you could also use. Um, it's it's pretty amazing. and I. I, I think um often worthwhile to just take a moment and actually just appreciate what has been created um by this wonderful um open web and the culture above it uh, and below it um and so again with all that sort of philosophizing i want shopify to be like just a kick-ass citizen in um in in off that world and in that world um obviously we're not open sourcing our core product and I, you know that's a, like a choice we made but like we can open source liquid we can open source uh like we, we, we can run the open source project remix we can um you know just there's a lot we can share and permissively licensing it is you know <clears throat> what what we're we are paying it forward so to speak yeah absolutely so i have and, a question oh go ahead Taylor. Let's say, go ahead no 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 no, no, no say, it's gonna take us any questions no, you're, if you're going different a different direction. way, then no, I'm not going to let it go in a different All right. way. All right. So, I mean, so as far as I, I thought I'd seen a tweet, I was trying to find it and I, and I felt bad or what have you kind of typed in, but like we, we started migrating everything towards like custom data. Right. And so like this idea of, you know, now what used to, you know, just be meta fields and now we've got meta objects as well. Um, and there's, there's a lot of this, that, and the other, as far as like, you know, how accessible that is in liquid and little different hacky things that we have to do to figure out how I can properly access a meta object. And I'm not, I don't want to like dig into that necessarily. I, I love meta fields and meta objects. This is great. Um, as, as far as that goes kind of type thing. 
but you know, I like I said, I, I had seen a tweet a long time ago just about like meta fields, you know, being added uh into liquid and those sorts of things later on. And I couldn't find the the origin of this, like how far back this went, but I did find I think it was like it maybe in two thousand nine where it was added. Um kind of type thing elsewhere. And so uh I, I think that was my question as far as we were talking about performance, you know, now we're kind of like moving away from this concept of uh, tags for a lot of things um in favor of meta fields because they're so much more performant. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you can talk, I, I hear that talked about a lot, but honestly, I don't really know what that means other than trying to explain to merchants, like this yeah. is the way forward here. You know, even when we're in checkout, like we're, you know, it's very hard to access check tags at all with extensibility. Oh, like yeah. you mm -hmm. don't want to do it. Like, so meta fields and all these other things are this a different is, way to you go. You mean product tags? Um, yeah, no. product tags is a great example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if you can talk just like maybe high level, like you don't have to get into the nitty gritty as far as like from a performance standpoint, why, you know, tags, you know, meta fields and, and tags is, is that liquid basis? Um, or yeah. is, is that something else? I, so I, I, I don't know exactly, um, the way the performance projects out through tags, but I can tell you that performance is like a thing that's like the number one, like our, our, our motto in, in, in the areas where tax is owned in is like every millisecond matters. Um, and, um, yeah. if, uh, if there's important things to do with, uh, product tax and these kind of tags, uh, that, that are currently not performant enough, I'm actually perfect. Like they just tell me and I'll look into it. Um, you know, it's like, again, it's a very big platform and sometimes right. it just like kind of depends on when we build things, right? Like, um, um, we can optimize anything. We just need to know what's actually, uh, you know, what would lead to the, you know, best environment if 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 you could uh, take it to another uh, um, uh, gear. Tags are stored in Shopify as uh, I believe strings on um, on 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 the products. So it depends a lot um, on how uh, the liquid drops implement accessing them. My sense is very likely that doing uh, any kind of conditions on tags will actually do a substring match on the tag and therefore that will be way slower than against an indexed uh, thing but again all of this is like just like because it is this way and like nothing like the, through the power of uh, right. you know ability to uh, program computers we can uh, make computers and bend them to a will uh, like uh, uh, to every use case we want to and we are willing to prioritize so um but uh you you i mean i think the internet has gone through um you know, like it's just 20 years of realization that structured data is um, not the solution to all problems, but is part of the solution to all uh, problems of significant complexity. Like at some point, um, there needs to be a uh, agreement between um, what, you know, people say is of significance and then under how the data is stored so that you can ensure that the data is stored like with you know in schemas and so on so we have these meta field definitions we build and um, um that was like a, a thing on top of meta field so you can like we can create clarity of what is going to be found in this um meta field and then um uh, the meta field objects which used that to like take this all to a completely different level I'm really, really happy we finally got there. Again, this was like a long-standing plan um, to uh, yeah. do this. Like I, you were right, that meta fields appeared around. Um, I, I, I would also just put it like so it was towards the end of the uh, 2000s. Um, um, and um, um, there actually was the first version of meta field um, schemas already existed. They were called meta field generators, oddly and confusingly. Um, but we only ship two, one for ISBN and one for something else. But like this whole thing end to end that um, if you had a generator and you said it's this field and it's of type ISBN on your product page, you would get uh, like out completion and, and, and validation for the format of ISBNs it was actually there. We had to build this for a particular I, we, we built this for one customer as a preview of what we wanted to build. So then I, and then um, sort of Wow. Like, so it's kind of like an MVP. Like skills issues uh, on, yeah. on, on me as a manager and wrangler of people uh, like uh, trying to keep that project alive and uh, healthy. And so eventually we, like, we had to restart that once or twice afterwards and eventually gave up and said, okay, well, let's revisit this in the future. And then I'm sort of glad we did because a bunch of, uh, it, it's, it's actually good that we did 
definitions when we did because it was a much better version of its generator. So in a way, it was probably, you know, it's very hard to replace something once you have it. It's sort of good to write it when you really understand it, um, um, to, to, to my point earlier. So anyway, that, that all went fine. Um, Performance-wise, um, yeah, so we want meta fields to be uh, um, I, like accessed in bulk if possible. We want meta because that allows us to just do incredible uh, work on around pipelining. We want every one round trip like for for lookup. Like some some shops have millions of meta fields. Like we want um, uh, tens of millions, and um, um, we want we want this to be basically did, like our SLAs. They are like. 50 milliseconds or bust. Um, so uh, we, we want best to be uh, reliable as a data store. Um, um, and we find that um, even we constantly are surprised by just how useful it is to have these data stores attached. Now, we, so, we're yeah. constantly making them uh, better. I want to know more about the um, accessibility from Liquid because I don't actually have a super good sense for this. And I, I if you tell me this is like, Toby, this is part of Shopify, that's kind of a mess. I, I, I'll i definitely believe you. <laughs> because well, it's like... yeah, well, no. So like when we're talking about like meta fields versus meta, obje meta objects, there's definitely a lot more like complexity yeah. there as far as, you know, you'll sure. see people like complaining about like, oh, do I need to access this with dot value or dot values, you know, or whatever. And like, am I needing yeah. to like run a loop through this or whatever? So there's, there's, there's a little bit of like, inconsistency there maybe as far as like what you'd expect it's not like intuitive enough but maybe that's because it's early days still uh for the most part for a lot of us playing around with My original, the original design for this area uh called for there's a meta field tag filter that just is able to render any meta field by just piping it into it in a in a good way and then for the meta field definitions to be able to uh um customize the display logic uh, as an input to the filter so um um Again, I'm actually going to look up how far we got through that piece of roadmap, and I'm sure Vanessa is now going to be like super angry at me if I'm uh, uh, even bringing this up because I, I don't know if I'm just currently like leaking roadmap or um, yeah, we've yeah, got a medical, we've got a medical or whatever filters. I'm doing here. But yeah. like, um, um, yes, we want like I mean, we want to make this super cool and like like really, 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 really useful. Um, um, yeah. And 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 again not frustratingly brick wally to uh, uh to, to to learn um so yeah yeah well no i mean i think like i said some of it might just be early days and some of us kind of mm -hmm. learning the ins and outs of like how to access them um properly and so like like you said like that's that's the plan for the future and that's where we're moving everything you know anyways um i've, I've found them super super helpful yeah um, we're not there is a metafield like tag tax or so because they, they play an important role themselves as well uh, sure. uh but like um we need but more so back in than things that yeah yeah, more so things, at least the way that I explain it now, it's more so things that we want for the back end. Really, nothing, if if I want to surface anything on the front end, like I don't want to do it in tags anymore. I want to do it with filter, with meta yeah. fields. I, th I think that's like, I, I think that's, that's what I highly would recommend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Cross thinking. Did I bring uh, up anything for you? Yeah. Well, so maybe like, did you want to, like, 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 should we go to a list of grievances? <laughs> like, uh, you know, like any, anything? No, we like, don't want to get I, anybody fired at Shopify. That was not our no, point. No, you know, like never. Like the, everything that Shopify, everything that isn't like working is like a successful discovery of something that didn't work. Um, we, we don't even use the word failure or uh, <laughs> uh, you know like blameless. Um, um, hey, uh, like how could we? How could this be awesome? Is um, um, what we do. We actually sometimes run exercise inside of Shopify, like just mentally, sort of pretending we are like. Um, all, all of us here in, in in the room today are installed by um, some kind of hedge fund which purchased Shopify and installed us because previous management was crazy and it's our job now to fix things. So what is our first step? Whatever the answer to that is, we should just do <laughs> to, to ward <laughs> off the actual counterfactual. Nice. So I think that's, um, we, we, we love finding things that are not going well because then we can, we know what to fix. Yeah. So anyway, well, I mean, to the, to the... it's the best thing about the community is it's honestly, it's just like delightfully discontent with the status quo. <laughs> <laughs> so like delightfully, delightfully that's, yeah. that's, that's, well, I would say to the, to the positive, like I'd say a lot of the people like, like Jesse over top of like custom data and those sorts of yeah. things, like the folks that like jump in and actually answer questions, stuff like that. I mean, is, is really awesome to see. So I appreciate at least your side of the leadership side of like, not only getting those people in the right place, but also giving them the agency to where they can yeah. respond and jump in on stuff. So people, yeah. I, I said, Jesse's awesome. Jesse's <laughs> so, brilliant. 
Yeah. I do have an open partner support request that I was hoping we could dig into together. Oh, uh, yeah, give me the number. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm sure I they'll have, get to me in due time. To, to the complete horror of uh, various people inside of a company. I actually have full access. Like, I'm, I, 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 I sometimes do go into these tickets. So, yeah. so I kind of do it. Well, we'll leave that one for later. But um, so I have a question for you, Toby. We take a slightly different direction. So you've espoused your love for Ruby. And rails which i also taylor may note a rubyist and love rails and, and music i was just and waiting so, for this to yeah. pop in because i was like you've been gushing the whole time he's been I talking have. about his love for ruby here and like yeah my, my, my dog is called ruby oh, like, like, yes. it's, it's, that's <laughs> commitment it's good oh uh, one of the things that really uh, i enjoyed about the platform earlier on so i'm talking like 2018 19 2020 was how much uh ruby um, and rails was part of sort of the ecosystem around and then something happened toby and I feel like you kind of betrayed us, Rubius, and Ooh, with this wow, with this bucks. shift to, um, and I'm coming at this, you know, from a from a <laughs> funny part here, but in seriousness, though, like help me understand this this shift to things like React uh, away from maybe some of the more pedestrian things. You've already talked about how you think, and again, tying two things together, some of the decisions DHH has made were very. Uh, wise for looking you know he has talked extensively about his view on server-side rendering versus um, front-end code and so i'm assuming you had to wrestle a lot through how you guys would approach this particular area so help me understand why did you end up where you guys ended up and why, why do you hate rails now <laughs> yeah I, I don't disagree with what david says at all i think the um um i am uh um I certainly was not on board to the full client side application thing because it's just silly, especially like I know the computers are super fast. So it's like a kind of most law forgives all sins. Um, <laughs> it's, it's sort of rescuing us here, but like, um, it, it just was kind of like one of those pretty wild, uh, uh, periods. I, I mean, I, I confess we got, a, you know, we, we got caught up in this because we, um, um, I mean, we, we, we took that step pretty early. The reason why we did is because, um, we it was very clear to us that we had to go multi client very quickly like 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 uh, it just we 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 had the benefit of um running away like even in 2007 8 9 10 uh, we we were running a pretty wide uh, internet platform that gets a lot of consumer traffic so we were not confused about the crazy ascension of uh, of mobile phones um and um um the um uh so you know platform was well prepared for this the um what the mobile phones also made very clear is we would have to invest in like uh, good apps for the for for our um for our systems and and back then our um a lot of the shopify uh sort of features and business logic was kind of controller implemented which isn't like ideal of course um um we, we um um we, we ended up like having to just like work like what we automatically decided is to say like okay well let's build a comp like because we need leverage we were always going to be a smaller team than a lot of our competitors um and at least my minds uh, and um so so we, we ended up like we building on on api where we moved um all the uh, the logic of the Shopify code base really into uh, like an, like central ai as, as sort of a common shared uh nervous system of um uh of the company and wanted the like all clients to go through the same code paths for that um like clients like a uh, javascript was ui was convenient and there was a couple of other arguments for it which i don't think borne out i i it's i got pretty um disillusioned with this because the first version of our admin interface was like we rebuilt the framework completely ourselves and that was um I mean, it was very, very novel with like lots of great features, uh, like web framework, like 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 uh, the client side framework that is reasonably similar to at, at least Stimulus has a lot of the uh, same ideas in it now. Um, so so inspired some of that. Actually, maybe not, um, but like convergent anyway. Um, and then the direction um, uh, like this took us, of course, React like has ascendancy. We had a bunch of people uh, you know, join with React backgrounds and like. So I said, okay, well, we like have to talk through APIs to Shopify. So let's let let let's go do this. I think that let like that was very mixed results. I I, I if I would do, do it over again, I would have. But like, it was it wasn't quite clear that server would 
be able to make such a resurgence because like the browsers were super committed to just add client side features and there was there was a there was a um momentum uh in terms of how people learned about the web and uh that that like during the 2010s that just like really pulled into this direction so um 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 yeah, so we, we we went this direction. I mean, we, we made it work because we have this. I think we had the skill to uh, to pull it off. But really, what it told us was like we were quite concerned with our uh, with people in commerce, like in for for commerce sites to do the same thing. Like headless seemed like not a great idea um, um, because it just like e-commerce sites are like visit rarely sites um, uh, outside of maybe like like apple.com <laughs> and um, visit rarely sites really do not want to send you a couple megabytes of JavaScript which you then have to execute and then rent like it, it, like your Instagram ad needs to after, if someone even clicks it really needs to bring up the product that people hope to get um, very quickly otherwise you're not making that sale so it's like like for all these ways it's in a way um, that's sort of when we like really just said, okay, well, we got to um, unify server and clients uh, here. So, in in a way, like uh, Remix um, um, and our work on uh, hydrogen even before that is a bit of a um, it, it's it's a combination of extractions from what we've learned about how to get the best of both sides of uh, you know of a server and the client um, in our own work, but also just like you know like get into the headless stack and then kind of do what Shopify does is like set really good defaults and make it hard to do the wrong thing. Um, um, like, it, it, like this is, we didn't build this because we have like this incredible belief that everyone should do headless work or using the hydrogen stack now um, or through Remix. Um, it's we, we we did it because it is the best version of what this type of stack can do, and I do think there is a valid use case for especially for some enterprises to um um you know go even one step further on sovereignty and like completely own like integrate into an existing much larger system uh, or you know like there, there there are some cases where like you're gonna bump into the limit like liquid even just from UL structure perspective uh, and so on there um, I think it's worth uh, so. I also think that um, Shopify is just big enough of a platform that we don't need to be fully single channel, right? Like, I, I, like there's multiple ways to solve problems on a web. I think we should have an, uh, best in class solutions for the different philosophies, and then you can um, again find, um, you know, pick the one that's better for for your particular business. And um, we hope that we do a reasonable job to helping people through um, this decision. But like to go back all the way, like. Um, and 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 then I think I should say, in the apps world, we need a lot of client work, right? Like it's it's like it's it's the way we made the, the system composable. It's um, the way extensions extend into checkout, into like there, there there was a need, like there there was a important. This is how you write the JavaScript that's customly designed just to extend Shopify um, that we had to uh, formalize. And doing this not like completely um, off standard, but actually do this on like on on top of a reasonably commonly understood uh, like React uh, stack ended up being important too. So I understand what this might look like, but like I I I think it's important to say that um, if anything, we have been trying to take the world like of JavaScript frameworks and 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 and, and SPAs. And actually bending it more and more and more to the Rails philosophy, right? So, so I, I actually do think, and and you know, as you know, Rails through its uh, work on Turbo is um, coming the other way. And I think they're actually gonna like there, there's gonna be an appreciable uh, distance between those two things. Um, but I think they are both um, the middle here, a little bit outwards from where both of them have arrived, is the green zone of like pr high productivity, great products fun stacks right and so our opinions are very strong about uh like on the principles of w how we think like the web browser can be like utilized best the web server can do most of the work that it's uniquely qualified uh, at and and so yeah we, i think we are we're very happy where we ended up but i actually i really don't think this is a, a defection um although I, I see why the pattern might look like it um uh and um 
I think I think we ended up in a really really neat spot here. Well, thanks for tackling that question. And uh, so safe to say that Ruby if you, is still if you want to like totally disagree with what I just said, let's go at it because that's actually real fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I disagree per se, but I definitely feel like you know some of the ethos you espoused early on. I don't feel that when it comes to working in the app space these days, when the defaults yeah. are React based. Um, I agree that like we had to like we we made the choice. I made the choice to say that um, uh, this sort of like app bridge built on remix thing. But we want people to think of this as like um, I don't know Swift for Shopify in a way. Like you got like there just is a lot of benefit for having like a stack that's like first amongst equals um or maybe even a little bit ble more blessed because um it just means that like 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 in it we retain things such as we can upgrade the way the off works to be seamless and doesn't require these got off or like reloads and um um that's just harder to do with like many many sdks many implementations are like out there so um it's a little bit of a um th there was a while where we didn't move a platform forward nearly enough and actually it got really dire i remember one of my sort of worst um nerd credit days if you will um was like and there was a um thread on hacker news uh like trending about shopify's in those client libraries for python do a remote call when you import the package and it's like yo that's like I don't know, like that that's physically painful for me that my company would cause such grievance on everyone. Like it's like clearly not what anyone's supposed to do. So, um, you know, like uh, partly because like things just atrophy, like it's like it's hard to keep a huge amount of surface area, like excellent. Um, and um, so so that was like we used as the successful discovery of something that didn't work. And then um, we said, okay, well, what, how could this platform be 10 X better? Like build for shop that came out of it. Um, like, we, like lots of a remix work, much better templates, much better off systems. Um, uh, you know, I know we are in a transition in AppRidge, which um, uh, um, time, but like AppRidge 4 is really cool, um, uh, especially when it's fully realized. Um, so I think we, 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 I mean, through that period of time, um, um i think we traveled a huge distance here on um quality of a developer platform and um uh yeah so um part of this was like in a time where you, you're making a lot of changes you kind of need to say okay well this is the pointy end of a of a, or like of a stick or the tip of a spear and sure. um we, we chose that stack we could have cho chosen a rail stack Again, it's hard to run these counterfactuals. Um, sure. I certainly would have been more productive right away, um, but like, um, but I, I, that's not the right. I think um, uh, like we went, we went with data um, and um, uh, survey and so on, and just like said, okay, this is going to be it. And then, you know, what's great is the community has actually done a like really good job building like the Rails toolkits. Um, and we need to make sure we are supporting this as like better. And um, yeah. yeah, so here we are. Yeah, I just want to call out one particular, Kirill Platinov. Uh, I've seen a lot of his work and he's done a lot to keep the Rails torch gleaming in the darkness here. So that's good. It's good to hear that your, your decisions weren't like some systematic strategic shift away from people who love and, and want to be in the Ruby ecosystem it was more identifying the trends and what would work best for, for client stuff. Anything yeah, you want to share about the future where that's heading that would be safe to talk about? Or? No, I, I like I, I don't. I think I think a continuation of what we're doing is, is a safe bet here. Like I mean, yeah. just the, the Upbridge Four is going to become much better, but Upbridge Four is also designed to be web components based, right? So like that, like like just where we were with like a, lo a lot of Upbridge Three was just like okay, so JavaScript sure. calls, right? Like um um uh, was um not conducive to like it required re-implementation like there was like two entire versions of um, um uh polaris which were increasingly drifting and so um um we're, we're choosing um like we, we're evolving where, like all the areas um towards um wrap um wrapped uh web components because i think they meet like we want to get the like the the parts that make it a remix stack actually or like a, a react stack um as thin as possible um um so that it's available 
to everyone in the same thing. And again, so that Shopify can do most of the work because frankly, we have just more engineers um, uh, than anyone else. You know, it's like, yeah. so like, <laughs> I, I, I know the role we ought to play. So, um, um, but we also don't have infinite engineers and we can't work on millions of projects. Um, I, I review every project in Shopify every six weeks. Um, um, there are 1,500 projects going on right now. This is um, like, you know, that's half as many as engineers in the company. So um, that's a lot. Um, so um, uh, um, I think we've built a company that can uniquely pull off moving an entire uh, very wide platform forward reasonably um, at the same level. But then every once in a while things fall behind and we, we have to make some choices of, of attention. Um, for sure. Well, thanks for going down that road with me. Um... GraphQL or functions? Which which one is most interesting to you guys for your next topic? I I would like to know what you think about. I mean, functions. I'm just a fan. Although, uh, you know, like again, again, unfinished, unfinished project. Uh, like more more cut points, more things. This uh, I think Wasm is getting um, uh, you know much better. Like the the runtime, uh, like VM we have for it is getting uh, faster and faster and faster. So that's kind of I think that's set. Um, and they'll just become super high utility uh more and more over time um um and um for us always the question is like how much can we scale because the more cut points we make like it is currently possible to uh, configure your shopify store in such a way that uh um, there's like six or seven um uh functions we will have to call in for um a checkout rate calculation um that is that's a lot of VM exits. And um, like, e even if every one of them is like five milliseconds, that's just like, that starts getting uncomfortable. So we, we kind of like our, our capacity to expand its reach within the platform is um, um, like has of an implied skill check on us on how to um, make this extremely fast. Um, so um, but that's just to give you a sense of sure. what's happening internal. Again, every millisecond, co millisecond counts. And you spin up a separate VM for each function just for containerization, essentially, for security? No, it's, um, uh, it's, it works differently. It's um, um, on every um, uh, server uh, that runs Shopify app servers has a pool of um, uh, warmed up VMs. They all... Um, just because on statistically we know which functions are alive and, and, and commonly called per, like, so we, we pre-warm them, we have them ready. Um, it's like through um, local memory, they, uh, like, but, but we do have to serialize the current state of a checkout into uh, yet another object which you can, like you, you request for GraphQL. And um, uh, then we, uh, like it's, it's a local uh, machine transfer. I think that's actually changing. It was an offsite. Uh, like it, it, we had pools of um, uh, function VM um, uh, like in the same rack or at least close by in our cloud providers. Um, it's, I mean, it's easier from an administrative perspective, but it does improve increase the like like the variance because you end up like having network in in the way so we are we are we are going to get this onto the machines now which um will further give us much more deterministic uh, um uh speed results and the other bigger thing that like that we do is like a lot of them don't depend on each other and can be uh, run parallel we, we are already doing this um but um we have to rewrite that thing for a local machine and then there's an entire hermetical seal allows us to cache things and blah, blah, blah. But um, we are going to make it very, very fast. And then we can run lots of them. And then we can let people overwrite cool stuff. And then everything's good. So that's kind of a direction uh, this stuff is going. But yeah, it's cool. Um, it's very, very nice to uh, do this with WebAssembly because we can take the WebAssembly we get. And then we can, um, um, obviously, this is, uh, starts out safe. But it's um, on our side, we can, we can do a lot to compile this in exactly for the machines that are executing these vms um you know use like every trick in simd and like every trick on the you know because we, we, we can we can just com like compile them for exactly our environment and then uh um anyway there's like some really really neat computer sciencey problems to to to, to solve and really valuable because again every time we create like it's it's really fun for the engineers to work on an area where um sort of the innate craftsmanship desire to want to hyper optimize something ends up like being 
slam dunk business value um, because it gives then capacity to product to um, uh, you know expand the areas that can be overridden. And it's it's really cool how, how this works together. Now, will you be able to support at some point any language in functions that can compile down to WebAssembly? Like an Ruby. Yeah, it's already that's already the case. Is already the case. So okay. you you can you can use every. Um, you can you can use every language that uh, compiles WebAssembly. Our examples are tentatively uh, um, uh, Rust. I'm actually somewhat apprehensive about that as the um, choice. Um, we also have like uh, you know JavaScript uh, think examples. That's been giving us grief. Um, we, we we kind of there are ways to um, make this work, but like we've now had to commonly the case of. Um, people following that suggestion and then going for um, like in, in, at some kind of massive enterprise uh, uh, customer it just like has functions time out and depending on what the role is of them is like that can be a, not a good thing. Um, it's always like predictable what happens when they time out because you have to specify this. But like it's um, I, I think I think there's like this is an active discussion inside of a company how to make this amazing. My I keep arguing for why don't we give Liquid enough language features to compile to Wasm, and then I'm usually like chased out of a room because no one wants to write yet another programming language. But like, um, 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 that's just probably latent damage from actually having read the, uh, the Dragon Book. Um, Sounds like you so, need a long plane ride. <laughs> that is uh, past my um, um, rusty potato programmer level. I think at this point, <laughs> like I, I can't claim. Um, I, I can't I can't claim that skill level. So GraphQL, what do you yeah. think? Yeah, well, Taylor, I don't know. Have you used GraphQL much, Taylor? I don't keep in the silent. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's I remember when it primarily first, a lowly it's a, it's a front end. Choice. Dev. It's just I, yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. Like e-commerce is a graph problem. It's like it's it's it's, it's a graph data model. Yeah. And I love REST too. Or trust me, but like the worst thing you you, you end up in very very bad places if you have um one technology cosplay um <laughs> being another technology <laughs> yeah so like if we if we would have just stick to rest we we basically would have to evolve it into a, like an off standard homebrew fully documented shopify only version of graphql uh it's it's, it's just like very clear and it's nice to have uh um for for some of the more complex features like defer and like subscribe and so on, it's just very good to have client library support. So, um, <laughs> like that's my opening gambit. No, <laughs> no, no, no quotes into it. Um, well, I'm curious, really. I, I mean, I've got my feelings about working with it as a developer, but on the back end, like I've been looking into it for projects that I'm involved with, but not shop related. And one of the things that comes up real quick is that while well, this works great for some companies, but really it can be a performance nightmare depending on how your data is working. So. How did you guys navigate that? Because unless you were anticipating GraphQL for years, I don't know how you would. Like, I, and I wouldn't be. Uh, I mean, it's been a long time that we've been using GraphQL. Like, I mean, it's been it's been underlying our mobile apps since I want to say like seventeen, eighteen or oh, so. Wow. Like, okay. it's, uh, it's it's like the GraphQL API has actually been part of Shopify for an extremely long time. We just like again, we're pu pushing for convergence just because there are like we, we can't. REST has such strong backwards compatibility guarantees, which are like, I think, amazing thing about it as well. But like, man, like the, like the REST API is a reason for the 100 variant limit, right? Like it's just straight up. Like it's it's not like, we know how to count to a thousand or 10,000. Like we like, that's not the problem. But like the, the, the backwards compatibility need of that is just like, uh, it just, just, just means we can't, we simply can't evolve things. And again, this is why I say you have to like, I guess we, I mean, we even did create some versioning for it, uh, like a homebrew, basically cosplay GraphQL versioning for rest. But like, it's just like, um, like these things are better, um, uh, governed in, in, in the, um, uh, GraphQL, uh, like in, environment and just like allows us to like, not have to go and like every feature we implement have to like, Duplicate the code and um, uh, so on, and I just like um, again, we need to try. Like I, I think what all of our specifically merchants want us to do is like that the maximum amount of the three thousand engineers at Shopify uh, works on uh, making commerce better rather than um, you know ha like supporting two different API uh, calling conventions. So um, it's it's a bit of pain, but it's, it's like I, I think it's going to be worth it just because 
you know, I, I get it. Like the sort of GraphQL has recently been somewhat maligned um, because there is just some inherent complexity and also some unfortunate aesthetics in it uh, that, um, you know, just like trip people up. Um, certainly, I wish it would be more um, observant of um, web standards and just like uh, like 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 HTTP predicates and so on. Um, um, and um, so it's easy to it's it's easy to be um, cynical about GraphQL, but like at the end of the day, you can use the fetch tool in your JavaScript VM and like send GraphQL up and then you get JSON back, right? Like, so it's also, there, there is a bit of a f thing that like we explain REST by like, look, it's just like, here's what happens. Here's what's under the hood. Just use it plain and everything's, uh, everything works better. Um, or work through our SDKs, but then you, you know what happens because we just told you. And then we don't do the same thing with GraphQL. Um, and I think that's a mistake because GraphQL is also just that, except way more. Uh, you have way more options. So, um, so yeah. Um, again, have to make choices. It's also like again, maybe a little bit of Rails um, culture here is um, there's some areas where Windows, where Shopify is basically sort of said, okay, well, we're gonna go like full, like full Microsoft here, and we're gonna have backwards compatibility forever. Like for instance. Um, you know, there's the shitty, like you can see my Snow Devil store still, snowdevil.ca, it's like, looks like crap, but like, um, that's running on Shopify. Um, my, my, um, launch condition for launching Shopify from into beta was, um, can I rebuild Snow Devil in 15 minutes? Um, um, and, uh, so, you know, um, I, like this is a theme, a zip file that our unit test coverage actually uploads and ensures that still works <laughs> and um you know just like we're not gonna like like you you should be able to upload a theme from 19 years ago and it, it should work perfectly so that's an environment which is like okay this is stable um uh again lots of downsides to stability right you accumulate like like uh damage turns into scar tissue permanently um um and uh which you then has to have to live with um i think where Rails has been so inspiring, it's just like its willingness to not, like, it's it's just not it's not as taken with a sunk cost fallacy as like almost any other piece of software. It's like like the good bits stay around, and the things that are added are so well considered um, that they are going to be good bits um, at, at extremely high percentage likelihood. And um, um, but if something is in the way, just like out it goes. Right. And um, I think that's, I, I, again, I think like even this sort of permanent backwards compatibility for engineers ends up being a weird aesthetic because the engineers are the ones who can actually literally do something about it. Like literally everyone else can't. Um, so um, I think that's, uh, uh, so, so we might be a bit more ready there um, um, to, to, to forward evolve. I, yeah. I hope it's still worth building on, the, on, on our stacks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of this comes down to like somewhat philosophical principles that are long held that we tend to revisit in these cases and see if they're still true. Um, but they're not like new decisions per se. And um, I, I, I like to like invite my team specifically and also like all our customers to, you know, we have, we have strong opinions, but they are weakly held um, when, when, when it's time to discuss them. Um, I certainly changed my like I mean I changed my mind on even GraphQL. I was like, let's go rest full in all in. <laughs> like I, I I um like I was um it it it's there was an excellent meeting at some point, which was sort of like, you know, you can probably picture this as like sometimes they feel a little bit like a family intervention, <laughs> you know, like they were everyone's like Toby, no, like look, like like here's the dictionary definition of graph. Here's the computer science literature on what a graph is. Here's a diagram of a Shopify data model. You've made a graph. We need to use like we need we need to let people access it as a graph. It's like this is simple. And yes, actually, that turned out to be exactly right. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fun to have strong technical leadership, but also be willing to to wrestle through it like that. But it's a healthy culture. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is a cheat code for uh, anyone who builds anything. It's like you can you can there, there is a way to be always right. It's just like 
change your mind then it's <laughs> time to change your mind like to think that's right <laughs> like it's like and be very good at figuring out what's right right like this is like because often the stuff that everyone's doing is not right um uh, it's, it's often that means like if you, if you want to pursue truth rather, rather than um um uh um uh, i suppose um popularity is not the like, word i'm looking for um convention i suppose um yeah um like conventional wisdom is all it is is it's 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 not wrong. Uh, like uh, it's it's not fatal. That's all it is, right? This conventional wisdom will not kill you, although it can actually surprisingly. Um, but like usually it doesn't kill you outside of areas that are moving, evolving very fast, which you know tech is. So it it can kill you, but like it's not thought to be able, like it's, it's thought to be safe. Um, first principle thinking is what people think is risky because it leads you to sets of opinions which are just kind of different from what the contemporaries will pursue and uh you know but that's where the alpha is it's like the unobvious but correct choices are the ones that define you as a company not the things that you do like everyone else and um so i think that's you know that, that makes it so fun as a problem to build companies in my mind you know because you get to really have a lot of skin in the game testing your assumptions testing your ability to just con like figure out something for being correct at least in your circumstance um more correctly than uh, what you know like the textbook would suggest sure so, taylor you got any favorite questions lined up there as we kind of round out near the end of our time here no i mean I, i'm pretty set on the the liquid pieces i think we covered a lot of like really good high level introductory pieces to that of especially stuff I've, I've never heard of before um and, and a lot of the really good ideas on like why why uh decisions get made there so i think that's awesome what is a like thing that's surprising that like is there like any is there any filters that like that should have that are like why does shopify not have them or um so um, rick roll filter any kind of sorry we need a rick roll filter <laughs> That's like with, with like like a very low percentage to replace the content. So you know, like just like so you can install it and just like oh, only man, sometimes like... some customers will report it. That's right. I should have been. I think you can probably do this with a cycle tag if you really try. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't work in I'm trying to think I say I'm trying to think of one offhand or whatever. I, I was not prepared for Yeah, uh... I'm I'm just like asking because like I'm trying to figure out like so so one pattern that I don't love like I mean, like, no, it's not that I don't love it. It's just like something I feel that has now been such a mainstay of the liquid community or whatever, but I would like to provide better tools is it's just um, like snippets are basically used as functions and it's, it, it that's not elegant, I find. So I am trying to figure out how to, like, I also liquid is not a programming language, right? Like, so it, it's actually, it, it's important that it's like pretty firmly rooted as a, like, template uh, to me templates uh, engine is different from a programming language um and it's um, turing complete isn't it i believe it's turing complete if you uh um i mean with uh, actually i uh, i should ask you like if you if you know of any kind of more direct way to make it turing complete i know people have made it turing complete by um uh submitting like the state of the run into a card note <laughs> and then reloading and reading this in and then now you're you're fully uh turing complete um um much to that, that was um very funny when someone started doing this um i don't i don't know if you yeah i mean yeah it would be because it has enough features of um in terms of loops so yeah <laughs> <laughs> um I'm at some point we deadline you <laughs> like like no one's gonna do uh, monero mining in, in bitcoin uh, um, or bitcoin mining in um liquid I, I don't think you're gonna get the flops challenge accepted right <laughs> <laughs> no very cool very cool yeah anyway well thanks for thanks for inviting me thanks for letting me crash um thanks for letting me ramble um it's, it's thank you, you know, for reaching it's, like, out to, like it's, it's it's 20 years for me it's been a long time it's fun to kind of i don't know like I'm usually not not one for nostalgia, but like it's kind of fun to tap into it every once in a while when you get a dive question. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Well, I, I would say I did think of one question. If I can sneak one in yeah. right after you tried to, to jump cool. off here or whatever. So because we we talked touched on like meta fields a little bit early on about how you know initially or whatever like this is this was the plan for a long time, um, you know 2009 or whatever, and really until they became 
native, right? Like directly in the admin, mm -hmm. it wasn't as much. We were using meta fields or getting really hacky with the routes or whatever to like update meta fields and stuff like that or whatever kind of type thing to make it work. I know, look, look at the wince, like, no. Cool. Um, but it's, it's like, uh, you, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, like uh, little but, secrets, yes. Yeah, like, so is there anything else other than meta fields that you're like sitting on? that you made a commit to like 10 years ago and you're just waiting for this to, to blossom at least that you're that you're that you could talk about i don't know if there's um yeah i don't know if there's anything saw, like that that you're excited you about. saw a preview of something landing just now which i don't think people quite understand just the extent of it yet which is fair because it's not like everyone get, can play with it yet um which is the markets i think markets are like a reinvention of shopify's like the way people are going to use shopify i think that's they are um they're one of those beautiful simplifications to make like a lot of things that you know businesses think about um markets intrinsically like when when you would have a, a conversation inside of a company they would say hey social we, we need to expand into social media better or like we need to do something on tiktok or we need to actually uh sell to friends or um you know like that, there's like that is thinking about markets already and um like turning this on its head and like having um, a system by which you can set rules after which something becomes a market and then make decisions really, really um, like, like start with a default, like from which you inherit, but then like override just the bits, like your French store for um, uh, French holidays can just be with, uh, like have French flags everywhere. And that's just like something you can decide with markets and, um, um, and something you can go into the editor and just say, okay, well, I'm only changing this for a French market now. And, uh, um, as I do have to find it. And, um, um, again, that's also going to be a construction site and a work in progress because there's so much further we can go, but like, it, I know it's turned us more ambitious about making businesses that, um, uh, I think can like, I think what we found there is that, um, a new way to make um a, a lot of real complexity extremely legible for people like because so often in these but like i think one of the biggest issues that i saw with shopify um um is that it worked extremely well for the beginning um and like sort of initial sales domestic entrepreneur kind of thing and actually worked extremely well for the large businesses funnily enough right like um especially uh like many large businesses are not uh don't, don't need to override everything with functions they are just like they're just at scale for like like complexity of the business is often counter correlated to the um um uh, to the com um, so complexity of a business often counter correlated to the scale. Like it's, all, it's usually the, the sort of not growing um, middle size retailers that are super complex. And they always wonder why they're not growing. It's just because the complexity is impossible to, to reason about and, and play with and toy with um, uh, is what I want to tell them. And then they don't tend to react really well to that. And then so I learned to not. And so um, um, I, um, uh so so it works really well on both sides but not the middle right like there, there was sort of a point where like okay now like you're certainly plus size and have a plus size business and you know plus description is you know it always looks like okay two thousand three thousand dollars whatever and uh but like on, honestly it's like i don't know they pay more for their printer repair contract right like in, in some cases where it's just like nuts. right so um so most important piece of software is like really, really, really affordable there. Um, so that's not the, the plus cost is not the obstacle. Um, but like the reason why you had to go plus is because you kind of had like in our um, view, you, you just had to kind of create a store per sort of expansion, uh, geo expansion side. And that comes with complexities like of how to organize your company, who gets access to what, you're just like, there's a lot of this. And um, again, this feel, felt to me like one of those brick walls you get into when you climb the hill. And I, I, I um, where people said, actually, you know what, like this is stay domestic or just let's not expand. Let's like making choices due to complexity that actually are very negative for the future of a business in, 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 in the end. If they then did that, so to give you a long answer for a short question, um, um, they, um, um, 
can make it all work. But like reasoning about the overall business is like devilishly hard. And this is not a shop fair problem. That's just actually a company problem. Like figuring out the competitorial problem of like which discount can you advertise where because you have imported it. Like where is it actually valid? Did you import it everywhere? And like it, it, there's just a lot to this kind of thing. Um, so I think we've cracked the code on just just moving this all over here. Um, but I think you can do expansion stores. Um, uh, like at a certain point, when you decide, okay, I'm gonna have it, its own merchandising team, you can go and um, say like certain markets, especially international. I'm just gonna get uh, uh, like completely um, uh, managed as a managed market for me through you know what we used to be called markets pro confusingly, but I, I this is like by by the way, this is like a total Toby thing, right? As you could like no one in a company of like branding company would ever. Um, suggest to um, use the term you just used for something you just launched again for like a totally different feature. But like, I, 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 I'll take all responsibility for confusion. I think in a couple of years, everyone has forgotten about it, but like, hey, um, here we are. So um, what used to be Markets Pro is no longer Markets Pro. It's gonna be, I think it's either managed markets or, I, I, I'm, I promise them to, uh, um, my contribution to this whole mess was like getting it started and they get to you now decide. Um, Stay out the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, anyway, so whenever we figure that one out, um, you'll hear about it. And, um, uh, you know, that's a way to like have another entity, like do all the give all the landed costs and all the complexities for you. That's another choice that, that's good. And then wherever you want to control all the knobs and dials, you'll be able to just say, okay, well, I have a different catalog of different prices or different language or different um, a theme, different liquid templates, different shipping rates, different whatever you want. Like this, I mean, like some of this is roadmap stuff, but like, I know, I know this is like, doesn't sound like that um, great, but it's like, because it's like, even when you use it, it's so bloody obvious that all e-commerce software should have been designed like this from day one. And we just didn't figure it out. Um, because sometimes it takes 20 years of just like chipping away at a problem until you truly understand the, 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 the domain so well that um, the obvious things become obvious, right? Like, and, and soon it's going to be like obvious to everyone and everyone will uh, like um, uh, either switch to this or evolve to uh, whatever they have to, I think, this approach. But um, as, at least I, unless I'm completely wrong about how well this works. Um, but yeah, like those are the really fun bits. Um, I can like talk for a shit, like another hour probably about, uh, you know, everything I'm excited about in AI and LLMs because again, it fits so well into the company mission, um, sidekick and all these other things. But that sounds like around yeah, two, some time. maybe sometime yeah. in the future. Have you back on? Yeah. yeah, like maybe in some time in the future would be fun. Maybe. I enjoyed myself. I really like this conversation. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, Toby, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks. And thanks for everything you guys are doing for the community. It's like, it's, I love this community. It's so great. It's a lot like the Ruby community, a lot of positivity, a lot of great people. So, and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of the best and rarest thing, yeah. um, which is optimism. Yeah. It's amazing how important that is and how rare it actually is and how um, just feels like so nourishing and uh, restorative and uh, inspiring to just like, like engage in all out optimism. Like I had like about like the software is getting better, the possibilities are getting better, the tools are getting better. Um, and, uh, you know, like, you know, there's setbacks all the time, but like, I think everyone's like really, really optimistic for entrepreneurship on, in, on, a, on the internet and, um, specifically for, for, for sort of our corner, um, uh, of it here. And, um, I think that's awesome. That's cool. Well, way to end it on a high note, and hopefully we'll continue this sometime down the road. So thank you, Toby. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.